everyone, Gundam Facts here for our seventh and brand new episode of our special edition, Law of the Universal Century. Today, we are going to the One Year War era in an attempt to answer our particular question, which is... Yep, in this video, we are going to recense every variant of the GOG series and explore this very popular family of amphibious mobile suits. But let's start by the beginning. What is exactly the GOG? Coded in MSM-03, the GOG was an amphibious mobile suit created by the Principality of Zion during the One Year War. Like its chain code indicates, the GOG was the third created amphibious mobile suit and, unlike the MSM-01 Zaku Marine type, was not developed by Zionic, the original Zaku manufacturer, but by the rival company Zymar, which re-entered the mobile suit market. Now, what makes the GOG so special is that unlike the Zaku Marine, it was a successful design and a well-rounded amphibious mobile suit, which paved the way to most of the succeeding models, even for Zionic and MIP amphibious designs. Due to that, the GOG saved Zymat reputation and gave the chance to get the founding for the new development project. Completed in March UC79, the GOG was in fact truly a revolutionary design. Its particular silhouette, which rendered it sluggish and behemotish, was actually wanted by Zymat because of its hydronic properties. The limbs could retract for a better underwater cruising, and the shape of the head reduced water induced resistance. Even better, the massive design, which initially was meant for pressure resistance, turned to be a hell of an asset, as it gave it immense defense in close combat, and it also stored a ballast coolant tank filled with seawater. But why would the GOG need this cooling tank? Well, one of the revolutionary features of this mobile suit were its ranged weapons, a pro for Kyail M23 Mega Particle Guns. In early UC79, Megaparticles cannons were only mountable on large warships, which were large enough to install large cooling systems and generators powerful enough to initiate the beams. To solve these problems, the Federation had devised the ECAP technology, which involved ECAP's spatial cartridge with so a certain amount of Minovsky particles, which would easily be converted into beams by a mobile suit sized weapon. This method limited the number of shots but it also removed the need of large cooling system and miniaturization suddenly became easier. But in March UC79, the original designer of the ECAP, the V-Project, had not completed the first weapon using it, the Ares 78 Gundam and Gun Cannon Rifles, and Zion, with of this knowledge, had devised a less successful method to equip mobile suits with beam weapons. Zion simply advocated for miniaturization, through miniaturization without compromises. However, at the time the GOG was designed, the only type of mobile suit generators, the Zaku type and the Dom type generators, were not powerful enough to generate these, and the cooling systems were at the time too difficult to miniaturize completely. Zymat, however, was able to create a new generator in the GOG, which could power both of its new beam weapons. The addition of the seawater cooling system solved the issue of the cooling problems and the GOG appeared as one of the first mobile suits capable of firing beam weapons. Aside the Xia guns, the GOG also possessed a pair of torpedo launchers mounted in the west near the beam cannons which increased its firepower underwater. To enhance its close combat capabilities, the standard and manipulators were replaced by iron nails, which were large claws capable of cutting through even the famed new titanium. In addition, the GOG was also equipped with a fuzzy shard, which was a gel emitter located on the head, which would engulf the GOG and protect it against naval mines and increase its stealth towards sonars. With all these assets, the GOG was a very performing mobile suit, and a terrifying asset for the Principality of Zion. In late May, the GOG made its first appearance during the Battle of Horse Moresby where it devastated the Earth's Federation naval force ranks and sunk multiple Himalaya-class cruisers. However, despite its terrifying record, the GOG was far from being perfect. Not only it had poor agility, but its operational time on land was limited to only two hours. The polyframe body is often considered a main flow, and the reason why the two redesigns of the GOG, the Origin and the Thunderbolt versions, are more complex to address this issue. Because of all these reasons, it was soon phased out by other mobile suit 
from other manufacturers like MIP Zygox, and by any of these successor variants we will see later in this video. Before the variants, there is the predecessor. The GOG was derived from a prototype version, the MSM0301 prototype GOG. After the failure of the MSM02 Hydro test type, Zamet restarted from the ground their studies over the Zaku Marine type, thus linking the GOG to the Zaku series. These studies led to the creation of the prototype GOG, developed not on Earth but on Zion Homeland in Site 3. As expected, the result was mediocre. First, the propulsion system was a complete failure, and the third generated extremely low thus compromising its mobility on the water and the shoal -like. On the weaponry side, it was not much better. Unlike the future GOG, its RNL slash and manipulator hybrids were faulty and couldn't cut properly, no L weapons are expected. The Mega Particle Gun could only for a scatter beams and not focus one, and the generator had an absurdly high output, something dangerous and completely unnecessary. Even worse, the original plan was to equip it with torpedo pots on its arms, but series balance issues forced the engineers to remove them and to advocate for their relocation in the waste for the mass production model. Still, the prototype GOB was not to be shamed and despite it being a failure as a model suit, it was a worthy proof of concept. During the mass production phase, most of its creeping flow were fixed, thus giving birth to the effective and chunky regular GOG. The GOG in itself has very few variants, but there is one that needs to be mentioned. The GOG Kai aka MSM03K is a subtropical amphibious variant of the GOG, first introduced in the Fukushi mobile suit station. Similarly to the Goof Hunter, the GOG Kai was one of the super specialist designs in a variant specialist jungle amphibious combat. Meant to fight in the muddy waters of jungles, the Gokai replaced the brown and yellow paint sham of the original Gok to a visible in such environment with a light green color sham to improve its camouflage. In addition, all the internal systems were configured to be adapted to its intended environment. Now, the most interesting features about the Gokai. While it retains the same shoulders and iron nails that the average Gok, the Kai version could occasionally replace them with custom versions. The new shoulder were more streamlined and seemed to be a first step toward the shoulder of the future Igo. The new iron nails now feature an unbuilt mega particle cannon, but it seemed these weapons had cooling issues and difficulties to close the fingers as well. The Gokai also improved its inbuilt arsenal with a pair of additional torpedo launchers being mounted on its chest. Other than that, we don't know much about the Gokai, aside that it was apparently deployed near Borneo and was usually paired with another super specialized mobile suit, the Juaku Kai. The Gokai is not very significant in itself, but this underground model is actually very interesting and is the transition to one all the remaining variants we will now present. Now, time to cover a very famous and popular variant of the Gok series, I call the Gok Type C, widely known as the iGog. Introduced in the OVA war in the pocket, the iGog was not just a random variant of the Gok series, but a well rounded successor. The Gog was a good mobile suit, but its flow required to modify the design in order to fix them. Zymat then restarted the design from the ground, which led to the creation in late UC79 of the high performing iGog. The iGog was a very quick mobile suit. More compact, more streamlined and lighter, the iGOG had a far higher performance on land or underwater, and with its new paint sham, underwater camouflage was also ensured. At the time the iGOG was being developed, the Principality of Zion had already introduced the use of ECAPs for beam weapons, and the designer of the iGOG, the California base, made sure the iGOG benefited from it. The iron nails of the original GOG were replaced by less sharp and more versatile versions, the Vice Claws, which threw a beam cannon in their palm. Powered through ECAPs, the beam weapons of this Vice Claw didn't require no too powerful generators, nor the seawater cooling system used by the original GOG, and thus the design of the iGOG became more compact as it discarded them. 
In addition, the iGOG received new weapons in the form of waist-mounted 120mm machine guns and which were nothing more than inbuilt Zaku rifles. Other than that, the iGOG also introduced four torpedo launchers mounted in the head. Another interesting asset of the iGOG are its optional equipment. The iGOG could mount a supplementary jetpack meant to burst after with the water, but also special water to well missiles stored inside the vice clothes and encased in a special containment pod when cruising on the water. These were shared with another mobile suit, the Zigok E, and were made possible due to inclusion of the United Maintenance Plan in their development, something very unusual for non Granada developed mobile suits. The iGOG was a very powerful mobile suit. But it had its large show of flaws, notably its overcomplicated frame, its low defenses, a singing war in the pocket, and its production line being cut too short after the California based recapture, something which caused the iGOG to never reach mass production. However, to be fair, it was an excellent design that survived the One Year War, with some units, owned by pirates, being still active as late as UC 96. A very underground mobile suit of the iGOG lineage. Now we will address the mysterious MSM-03 BES, also known as the iGOG Modified or iGOG 2. The iGOG 2 is an enhanced version of the iGOG, which was produced in the later part of the One Year War. Outlaw, the iGOG 2 was nothing more than graphic designer Kazuisha Kondo, redesign of the regular iGOG with its personal touch of realism. Later, the iGOG 2 was integrated to the UC continuity as an improved variant of the iGOG line. Still, stats-wise, the iGOG 2 is a strange case due to the fact that despite being an improved version, its thrust, size and generated output are identical to the average iGOG. So how is it an enhanced version? Well, despite some chain characteristics, the iGOG 2 has still its share of differences with the base model. The main difference is that the iGOG 2 has a longer head and that the hydrogen thrusters are directly connected with this enlarged head rather than protruding from the back. With this, the underwater performance increased drastically and the new enlarged head also stored the chemical carburants used by the optional jetpack of the iGOG. This meant that the iGOG 2 didn't need the jetpack anymore and so it gained a greater versatility. The iGOG 2 deployment history is mostly unknown, but there is a known instance where this particular machine was used. In November or December UC-79, the Principality of Zion started turning their attention to a bastion of the Earth Federation Naval Force, a petroleum platform located in the Northern Sea. Thought impenetrable, this base was of high strategic value and the Zion top brass devised a plan to destroy it by using a iGOX 2. The plan consisted in a young Zion soldier and sing pursing, infiltrating the base with a iGOX 2 and create a bridge for the remaining amphibious troops to attack. There, the iGOX 2 would be confronted with the far inferior but more numerous Team Aquas of the local garrison and engage them in combat. At the end of the operation, the data collected by Persing and his iGOG 2 were recovered in a secret record, but wherever this involved the survival of Persing or this mobile suit is still a mystery. And before we conclude this video, the last of the GOG variants, the mighty but mysterious iGOG High. The GOG was good, the iGOG better, but it was far from being a perfect design and the Principality decided to finally update it resulting in the iGOG Kai. This meant that the iGOG Kai is everything the iGOG was, but better. This meant higher generated output, lighter weight, enhanced thrust, and more efficient vice clothes, without fundamentally changing the design. Because of that, the iGOG Kai is at 99% identical to the regular iGOG, if not for its paint sham, which is very similar to the camphor paint sham. The dark blue colors are linked to its area of deployment, as unlike the iGOG, which was primarily used in coastal assaults, the iGOG Kai was primarily meant to operate in open oceanic waters. The other difference is the addition of a small supplementary suit hydrojet thrusters, which explain the iron mobility. Wherever the iGOG Kai ever left the production stage is debatable, but something is sure. It left history as fast as it entered it 
They come in in the process, only one of the many super specialized, costly, and time consuming machines which plundered the Yungu Airfruit. And we have now recensed all the variants of the GOG series. This will be all for today's video, but stay tuned for future log content delivered on the same channel. Hit the like button and most importantly, comment and subscribe as it really helps the channel to flourish. So long for the new tabs, until the time of our next special edition.